Aren't we conditioned to kind of react? Dude, respond? I react every day. I react every day, but the fundamental question is, it's not about the money, it's not about the sex, it's not about the weight, it's not about the diet. This is something else. If you want love in your life, in your future, then you better take care of... I think you gotta have a dream. The school of greatness. Really? <laughs> yeah. Please welcome Lewis Howes. Is there a way to transform your energetic field and to transform your mindset to start attracting a romantic partner that's the right fit for you yeah yeah so um well let's start at the top yeah. right i mean <laughs> uh people always ask me like how do i create you know the person uh of my dreams that i want uh, in my life and i always say take out a piece of paper uh-huh write down everything you want in that person and then become it that's it because um so many people have so many interesting definitions about what they think love is right and so uh, some people have it in terms of need. Some people have it in terms of sexuality. Some people have it in terms of control and, and dominance and success. And so those are different experiences that really don't lead to this concept called love. And so my theory in a relationship, um, uh, I, was, I was in Australia for three weeks and I was doing this big book tour and I was on all these television shows and all these radio shows and, you know, I wanted to talk about, you know, the science of changing your mind, you know, the neuroplasticity, epigenetics. And every television show, they were asking me about soulmates, how do you create, <laughs> and, I, and I was just so tired by the, by the end of this tour. I was at the Establishment Hotel in, in Sydney and I was sitting with a CNN reporter and attractive woman and she said how do how come i can't create the relationship that i want and i just was so over it i just looked at her and i said let me ask you a question would you go out with you mm. which is really the fundamental question so i have a couple of theories about relationships that i think are really important and i i use the same exact principles with my life uh, first of all i will never work in a relationship and I don't think anybody should work in a relationship. I think if you're working in a relationship, something is not clicking, something is not right. But if you bring your best and the person that you're with brings their best and you celebrate your life together, then there's, there's constructive interference, there's growth, there's energy. If you're not at your best and you show up, more than likely you're gonna pick someone or something apart. And it's better that you remove yourself for a period of time and get back into your heart mm. and present yourself at your best. And so if you're not there and you need a mirror or a reflection, then it's good to ask, am I missing something? Am I not seeing myself in some way? And then there's a healthy conversation when you invite it. But if you're not invited to contribute your opinion, mm -hmm. then it's better off that you don't, right? Mm. So people always say, I want a loving relationship, but what they really want is happiness, really. So we, we do these meditations uh, to create love in our lives. And, and it could be love in uh, familiar relationships with your siblings, it could be with your parents, it could be with your friends, or it could be with a significant other. And so if thoughts are the electrical charge in the quantum field and feelings are the magnetic charge in the quantum field and how you think and how you feel broadcasts an electromagnetic signature that influences every single atom in your life, mm. the thought sends a signal out and the feeling is the magnetic field that draws the event back to you. Right. So if you're not in a place where you're in love with life or in love with yourself or practicing diminishing your emotional reactions to certain people or conditions in your life and you're living in anger or hostility or judgment or fear and you want a loving relationship, there is no magnetic field for you to draw that to you. Hmm. And in fact, if you say to me, well, it's that person or that circumstance that's caused me to feel this way, and then I would say, I mean, that person or that circumstance is controlling the way you feel and the way you think. And anything that controls the way we feel and the way we think, we are victims to, right? So most people are unconsciously responding 
to the conditions in their environment, experiencing emotions that are derived from the hormones of stress, those emotions cause us to feel separate from our dreams. They heighten our senses, mm. so if we can't see them, it doesn't exist. The threat or the danger puts us in emergency mode. And we can think positively about the relationship we want. We could send the signal out into the field. We could have pictures. We could, have, we could remind ourselves of what it is. But if you're not drawing the experience back to you, because your response to the environment is actually weakening your organism, it's weakening mm. your response, is actually weakening the body, then you will be, as a victim, more vulnerable to the conditions in your environment, whatever large or small. And I'm talking about microorganisms as well. So if you wanted a true relationship where it was fundamentally based on this concept called love, now let's talk about that because we practice this a lot in the work that we do. If you could truly begin to practice trading those survival emotions mm -hmm. every day for elevated emotions and you practiced opening your heart, it's, it's, a, it's a skill that has to take place where you move out of survival. Mm. So people say to me, well, I can't open my heart. I, I, don't, I can't feel love. And I say, well, what do you practice feeling? Because whatever you practice feeling, you're feeling most of the time. And that feeling could be guilt, but you're so used to it, you wouldn't even know it's guilt. It just feels like you. Are most people practicing a feeling or are they just reacting to how they feel? Well, they're, they're, they're reacting to their external environment. What's or, happening? Or, or they're reacting to some stray thought in their mind and every thought produces a chemical. So if they have an unhappy thought, they feel unhappy. If they have a judgmental th thought, it produces chemicals that makes you feel polarized, right? So how much does one thought change your chemical body? Oh, that's an interesting question. So let's just let, 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 let put this on hold <laughs> okay, here. Yes. So, so the stronger the emotions that we feel from the problems and conditions in our life, the more altered we feel inside of us, the more we pay attention to what's causing it outside of us. Mm. So if you have an event in your life, an experience in your life that has a strong emotional charge to it, and you don't feel like your normal self, you feel this alarm system switch on you're gonna narrow your focus on the cause and the brain's gonna take a snapshot and that's called a long-term memory, right? Mm. So then what people don't know is that every time they think about that event, they're producing the same chemistry in their brain and body as if the event was occurring. And in the, that moment. In that moment. So the highly charged event is actually producing the emotion and the body is so objective that it doesn't know the difference between the real experience that's creating the emotion and the emotion that the person is fabricating by thought alone. The body's believing. It's so objective, it's believing it's in the same environmental experience. So the strong, the highly charged emotional events, you, you, some people think of their ex and the uh -huh. thought of that person makes them sick, makes them feel out of balance. Wow. So, and I, one image, one thought in their mind makes them feel out of balance. So all you need is an image and an emotion, a thought and a feeling, a stimulus and a response, and you're conditioning your body emotionally into the past. Mm. So now, the memory's in this, just not in the brain now, it's in the body, okay? So now, that thought of that person is actually creating a response in the body that's consuming the body's energy for growth and repair, consuming the body's energy to create, because in survival, it's not a time to create. In survival, it's time to run, fight, and hide. So the problem is, is that it becomes a subconscious program. It's no longer a conscious process. It now is a subconscious process. So now the body has been conditioned into resentment, into unhappiness, into fear, anxiety, whatever it is. And so it's back to our concept of bringing love into your life. So you say to that person, okay, you open your heart, and they're gonna say, are you kidding me? I was injured. Yeah. I was hurt. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let me see your cards first, right? <laughs> right? And once I see your cards, then I'll then I'll open up a little bit. So so we protect this, right? So now in in that state of survival, the the, the research shows that the long term effects of those stress hormones are pushing the genetic buttons that are creating disease. The body can't live in emergency mode for mm. that period of time. So in a sense, the person 
is making themselves sick by thought alone. Their thoughts are making them sick, literally. So the problem is, is now the body is conditioned into the past and it's the mind. Now once the, the body- The body is the mind? The body becomes the mind emotionally. So now all of this energy is stored in the body and now the person now has to leave their unhappiness and step out into the unknown. They have to get out of the familiar feelings that has, has defined them. So they'll say, I can't really feel joy. I can't really feel love. And what they're really saying is, I've, I've been conditioning my body emotionally so much into the past that I can't feel anything else other than what I know. Anger, resentment, pain, yeah. suffering. And psychology calls those normal human states of consciousness. Those are altered states of consciousness. So normal states of consciousness are these kind of negative feelings? No, or? I'm saying that those states of survival, people say anger, fear, those are normal things. Gotcha. No, those are, those are in survival, those are altered states. You're, the survival chemicals are actually knocking your brain and body out of balance. You're out of balance in that moment. Mm -hmm. And if you keep doing that, the imbalance is now the new balance. And now you're altered emotionally. So back to the concept of love. Mm -hmm. So the person can theoretically, intellectually, philosophically say, oh, I want this type of person. She's gotta be this way, he's gotta look this way, he's gotta be like this. And they're basically saying, I want something that represents all the things that I no longer want, right? <laughs> and so they're creating with their brain and mind, which is perfect. The problem is, is that if you can't feel the emotion of your future, your manifestation of love before it's made manifest. Like people say, well, well, when my relationship happens, when I find Mr. Right, then I'm gonna feel love. Like waiting for the outer environment to change, to take away this feeling of anger, resentment, emptiness, but they forgot that they create reality. In other words, when it finally appears that I'm gonna feel love, that's, that's cause and effect. We're waiting for something to happen. If you're feeling the lack and the emptiness, then you're keeping your relationship at arm's length mm. because you don't have the magnetic field to draw to you. So the emotions that come from these energy centers, the lower energy centers in our body do have frequencies, there's chemistry involved, but they have a different agenda. So now we mm. ask the person, can you teach your body emotionally? what the future will feel like before it's made manifest. That means you can't wait for your relationship to feel love. You have to reverse that battleship and understand feeling love now. is going to be yeah. the magnet. And if you can hold the vision of your future, a clear intention with a coherent brain, organize signals into the field, and you could actually crack this thing open and practice getting so present in the moment Mm. that you're not anticipating the next moment or trying to predict the future. And you're no longer romancing the emotions of your past. You can find that sweet spot of the generous present moment. The familiar past is the known emotionally. The predictable future is the habituation of autopilot being unconscious and programs. Those are both knowns. Mm. There's only one place where the unknown exists. That's the present moment. So if you could work with your body to the point that it trusts you enough to feel so safe hmm. that you have conquered it in a certain way that it could actually relax into the present moment and it's not worried about what's gonna happen next or what's going on around, around you or that you need to eat, you need to pee, you need to move. Right. You, you got beyond all your drives and you're, you're ready to create. That moment where you're present, if you could begin to work with your heart and start to breathe and start to practice feeling love. In the beginning, it would feel foolish or gratitude. Why would I feel love if it hasn't happened? Well, that's because you've been hypnotized mm. into waiting for your world to change to feel the, feel the emotion from the experience. Wow. But according to the quantum model, your emotion ahead of the experience, when you combine that clear intention with the elevated emotion and you feel love, your body's so objective that it's actually believing, it's living in that future mm. in the present moment. And your body now is beginning to change. You are beginning to change your biology to reflect what you're about to experience in your future. 
So the stronger the love you feel, the more altered you feel inside of you, the more you're going to pay attention to that picture in your mind. Stimulus response, memory, emotion, mm. thought and feeling. But now you're remembering your future instead of remembering your past. And biologically, wow. it's actually wow. the same. How do we, remembering your future as opposed to remembering your past? Right, it's the same thing biologically. The so, body experiences the same way by thinking and imagining something that hasn't happened yet, but it will happen. Okay, well, and imagining something vividly from the past that happened. Sometimes our brains trick ourselves in thinking it happened a different way, doesn't it? Yeah, but that's, that's incidental. It's none yeah, of your business yeah. how it happened. In fact, it's in how fact, I interpret it. Exactly. It's your perception, right? So, huh. so then the, the stronger the emotion you feel from some outer experience in your life, the more altered you feel, the more the brain freezes the frame and takes a snapshot. Well, now you're freezing a frame in the outer environment. But if you're truly in the present moment and you know exactly what you want, and you begin to teach your body emotion, start practicing opening that heart, it's amazing what happens. The moment that heart begins to open, we've measured this so many times, Lewis, on a, on a scan, on a, on a real-time brain scan, when the heart moves into this kind of rhythm, when you're feeling frustration, when you're feeling impatient, when you're feeling resentment, you are stepping on the gas pedal and you're stepping on the brake at the same time oh. and the heart is pumping against the closed system and it causes an erratic beat. It, it becomes incoherent and energy literally leaves the heart. Now, you no longer believe in your future. You can't put your heart into your future. You can't trust the outcome because there's no energy there. It's, it's being used and consumed somewhere else. So energy is leaving the brain as well. But once energy starts to move into the heart, we've seen this so many times, and it starts to beat in this rhythm, like banging a drum or dropping a pebble in water, pebble after pebble, the heart begins to create a wave of energy right to the brain. Like, like taking a big sheet and going like that, and then all of a sudden you see this wave, wow. and the brain gets this rush of energy, and that change in brain wave patterns, that change, that wave is carrying information and the person starts to get a very clear idea. They see their future very clearly. Now, now that energy is causing them to move into very coherent alpha brainwave patterns, which is the state of creation. This is when you no longer hear the voice in your head that's talking to you that you listen to and believe is the truth. I'm not good enough. Yeah, whatever that is. Those are, that's called the default mode. It suppresses the default mode network, and the next thing you know, you start seeing in pictures and images, you start dreaming. And that's the imagination, that's the creative state. So now, you start naturally imagining the heart is the creative center. We gotta put our heart into our future, it better be open and activated. Mm. So now, when you start falling in love with your future, oxytocin is released in the brain and in the heart. Oxytocin signals nitric oxide. Nitric oxide signals another chemical called endothelial derived relaxing factor. And just like when your sexual organs get filled with blood because you're aroused, the same thing happens here as it would happen somewhere else. And literally the arteries in the heart and lungs engorge and now your heart feels full and it's thumping in order and you're in the present moment. Now once that happens, and it's beating in rhythm, the heart produces an external magnetic field up to three meters wide. Now, you're in survival, you're drawing from the field and turning into chemistry. When you get energy in the heart, it's causing a change in the brain, and all of a sudden it's resetting the baseline for trauma, and now here you have a magnetic field. Now the heart is your magnet. It is, it is the center of creation, and now that, that energy is frequency. Mm and frequency carries information. And you can lay the thought of your new relationship on that energy because it's consistent with it. You cannot lay the thought of your new relationship in need. That's a different energy. What do you and, mean in need? Well, if you're feeling- I'm needing I'm someone needing, to love me, Yeah, of course, partner. that's a different frequency. That's a different energy. What happens when you're in a need state as opposed to an attraction state? Well, you're in lack. So now you're trying, you're grasping, you're controlling, you're forcing, you're trying to predict, you're overthinking, overanalyzing, and that's how people live their relationships. So then if you are going to prepare your brain and body for a new relationship, then you would have to become love completely mm. every day. And that signal then that you're sending out into the field can carry the thought of your health, your wealth, your relationship, or whatever. But here's the cool part. 
When the heart is activated like that, and you feel so whole, so in love with life, so satisfied in the moment, so exuberant, that it's impossible to want. Now you're no longer in lack. <laughs> See, now you're so whole that you will magnetize wholeness in your life. Uh, the person who's the person that fits the mold energetically, that would be the same as you and yet complement you so that the two can become one, mm. right? And then instead of in contrast, in union, you exchange information mm. equal to that emotional state. In other words, people use each other to reaffirm their their dependence on certain emotions. You have certain people you complain with about politics or whatever, they complain back about their lives and you use each other to reaffirm, you know, some type of uh, belief or something. Belief right, yeah. about life emotionally. You have emotional agreements on things. Well, that, that emotion is energy and energy is frequency and frequency carries information. So you share the same energy, you share the same information, but that's what people do in their lives, but now in a true loving relationship, when you're truly in your heart, then the question is what would love do in the relationship? And when your heart is open, it's no longer about you. Yeah. It's about how I feel so amazing with you, I feel even more amazing, but without you, I'm still whole. Mm. And so now I'm no longer in need or lack. And so now when we get together, and our fields interfere, when they start interfering, now the amplitude gets way higher and there's way more energy. And now, I mean, I'm, I'm all about all seven centers of the body lining up, all of them. And we're here in a body, let's enjoy it all, but right. come from love. And so now your heart is so open that you can't do anything else but give. You feel so amazing. You're so happy with yourself, so happy with your life, so happy with what you have. You want other people to feel the same way. Mm -hmm. And you say, here, take that. And when you give now, guess what happens? You release more oxytocin, more nitric oxide, and more of those chemicals that cause the heart to swell even more. Then all of a sudden, your immune system gets stronger and all of a sudden your body starts feeling better, you start having more energy, and mm. now it, the constructive interference between two people that are coming together in wholeness and no longer dependence mm. or lack or separation or need is a different game. So then what they do to protect, to nurture, to grow, to evolve that love is one of the most important things that they have, not because they're doing it out of obligation or because they're married or whatever. It's just they can't not do it. And we see people, we were, had somebody scan the other day in our workshop in profoundly high amounts of gamma. She can do it on command. And there's a, an incredible arousal that takes place that goes along with these high brain frequencies that you can only ex describe as ecstasy or bliss. Now you're getting that ecstasy and bliss, not from anyone or anything out there. No drug, no person, no, no football game, no shopping spree mm. is doing that. It's somehow, Inside. it's coming from within. Like, what is that connection that you have? And so one of the scientists said to this woman, how do you do that? Hmm. You know what she said? I have difficulty not doing it. I can't not do it when I'm in a, it's too, when I'm, when I'm doing this, I, it's too good. So now that could be a constant feeling in your life. So now. What, love? W w independent of anyone or anything, it's coming from within you, mm. okay? So think about this. Whether you're in a relationship or single. It doesn't matter, you're matter. whole. Your love is not wavering, it's constant, right? So now imagine having this feeling. And when oxytocin is released, what most people don't know is that it seeps into the amygdala. And there's certain survival emotions in the amygdala, fear and anxiety, aggression and anger, pain and suffering. And it literally mm. shuts the lights out in those circuits in the amygdala. And there's only <laughs> one thing left, love and joy, right? Huh. So. Now this person is suppressing the survival centers, resetting the baseline of the past, how they perceive the past. And now the research on oxytocin shows that when you have just a slight, slight level of increase, and ours, our, our research shows our students are way outside of normal, yeah. that it's impossible to hold a grudge. 
You know why? Because the feeling feels so good, why would you judge another person or why would you react to some condition and lose that feeling? You figure it out really fast. So this birth of unconditional love really says, I'm in love with myself, my connection to some divine intelligence within me, and because I'm so in love with life and with myself, I'm looking at life through the lens of love, which means I'm going to allow you to be whoever you want around me. I don't really, you, you I'm no longer. I'm not a reaction. I'm not a reaction because I've overcome my fear. I've overcome my anger and now I'm ready for love. And now that relationship that you have, if you find that equal, Mm. Huh, that's a needle in the haystack because now it's a vibrational match. Right. And so as long as you're evolving, as long as I'm evolving, as long as we're sharing the same ideals, mm -hmm. as long as we're working together, as long as we have our independence, and as long as we come together and we bring our best, and I say to you, how was your day? I mean, what did you learn? Or let's start our day. So how are you going to be today? Come on, let's just support each other. So what are the programs you're going to stay away from? Are you going to rush? You know, what did you do yesterday that you want to improve today? Mm. How can I support you? How can I love you in that? You want to text at noon? What do you need? And then how am I going to be? Okay, tell me how you're going to vocalize it, articulate it, so that now I understand your intention and I can support that's good. And so then when the person can articulate it, what are they doing? They're, cre they're rehearsing in their mind who mm. they're going to be. And so now they're becoming conscious of that future. And then they have to work on staying, un staying conscious of their unconscious programs. And by articulating that, they're going to let, not let those thoughts slip by as well. So then now you have two people in evolution. It's no longer about all the other things. It's not about the money. It's not about the sex. It's not about the weight. It's not about the diet. Those are all things that are, we already know. This is something else. This is a whole nother level where when you exchange and evolve on this level, it's the most important thing because now you see that person as a mirror. Oh my God, she did amazing. I'm in love with her. I admire her. Wow, she's got it going on. She, she executed today. She, she, she mm. got her behaviors to match her intentions and I want to celebrate her. Like, yeah. like, wow, I'm in awe. That to me, you don't work on that. It, you work on you. Mm. Everybody works on themselves and then they bring their best. And if they're not at their best, excuse yourself and get back to your best. And right. if you tell me it's that person or that circumstance, we went back to the unconscious program of being a victim. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with reacting. But the next question is how long? And, Are you going to stay in this mode? Right. Or, yeah. or do you want help getting out? Right. Yeah, right? So, so I think that, that when you start feeling those elevated emotions and your energy is synchronized, right? And yeah. it's, you got a Wi-Fi signal. Right. You got a signal. You're connected. You're 5G. You're connected. And you're connected. And what are you connected in? In this sense of wholeness, this sense mm. of love, this sense of joy, this, this, this satisfaction with yourself and your life. And when, I, I mean, I watch this, Lewis. I mean, people come to our events for all kinds of reasons. Uh, some people come for health. Some people come for wealth. Some people come for relationships. It's really funny. And they show up, angry people. <laughs> They're angry with themselves. <laughs> when they're angry with themselves, they'll be impatient and angry with others. People who are unhappy with themselves will punish other people so that they can feel their unhappiness. Or is it to get their anger out? Or is it why? No, because that's who they are. That's, that, that, that's the emotion that's driving their behaviors. People who are in love with themselves will find love in others. People who are happy with themselves will find something that they can connect with. They won't see all the flaws. They'll see some part of them that they want to enjoy. I mean, so, hmm. so, so if you're in a relationship and you've scrubbed the, the cupboard and you've taken out all those skeletons and you've looked at them mm -hmm. and you said, I don't want to bring this into my relationship. I don't want my insecurity to be there. I don't want my fear to be there. I don't want my judgment to be there. I don't want my emotions from other relationships to be there. So let me finish this. In other words, if you want love in your life and your future, then you better take care of your frustration because mm. you can't bring that there. You got to leave it. So then well, you may say to me, well, it's because that person and this emotion from 15 years ago, my ex makes me feel frustrated. Well, let me tell you something. The only reason that you're thinking about your ex is because you're still in frustration. You overcome frustration. You'll look back at your ex and you'll be like, 
I wish them well. Yeah. I'm not connected to my past any longer. So mm. cleaning the cupboards and getting down to those thoughts that slip by people's awareness all the time. Their behaviors, how they complain, they make excuses, they say it'll never happen, what do they do? And the emotions that keep them connected to their past, they won't, they won't even see that person. Mm. They'll walk right past their future relationship. They'll never recognize that person because they're looking at their future through the neurology and the chemistry of their past. Wow. And the brain only learns by, only, we only see reality based on pattern recognition. I memorize your face, now I know Lewis. And if the pattern matches, I know. But if you're creating a future, and you're not clear on that future, and you want all these things, but you haven't addressed all those circuits and behaviors and emotions and chemicals of the past, you won't recognize the pattern. You'll walk right past the relationship. You'll never see it. So, so I think that there's wow. the preparation for the relationship, the overcoming, and overcoming, and overcoming, and overcoming, and overcoming, and becoming, Ooh. all of a sudden now says, I am worthy. And the universe only gives us what we think we're worthy of receiving. So when you're worthy to receive, it's not gonna be on match.com when you're looking at body parts and whatever else. <laughs> this is gonna be like, ka-ching. An like, energy like, connection. Wow, yeah. like that came out of nowhere because <laughs> when you're in survival, and you're in separation and you're in lack and you're forcing and controlling and trying to predict outcomes. You're matter trying to change matter. And of course, it's going to take time for this to happen because you're creating a three-dimensional reality and everything in three-dimensional reality takes time. Mm -hmm. But when you're creating from the heart with a coherent brain and a coherent heart and you got that 5G Wi-Fi signal, it's, it's not like you go anywhere now. <laughs> there, the experiences are coming to, you're drawing the event to you. So, mm. so we spend a lot of time bonding with our future emotionally. I have colleagues of mine who look at our, our data on oxytocin and they're like, uh, listen, oxytocin levels go up during, a, you know, when I'm, when I'm in, a, in a relationship, the honeymoon stage of relationship and it, a monogamy is created because of those chemicals or uh, a female mammal is bonding with our offspring. That's exactly right. I want our people, our students to bond and fall in love with their future just like they do with somebody else. And when you're bonded to your future, no person, no circumstance, no thing is going to remove you from it. So then if you fall from grace during the day, then the next question is, what person, what circumstance caused me to disconnect from my love in the future? Mm. And let me rehearse in my mind if I have that same circumstance how I'm gonna overcome it. And now you're worthy of love. It's no longer the person or the event, it's just you're doing what it takes to stay in the emotion of your future. Your, your, your body is aligned emotionally to that future. So great doing it with a meditation, that's easy. But now the real game is open your eyes. <laughs> open your eyes. Happening, it's happening. Open, open your eyes and be in the initiation of life mm. and stay in that place and just yeah. know that your future is gonna happen. So, so being able to activate the heart and breathe in there and get the body out of survival and start working with it like it feels safe enough to create. Once energy makes it here, you're going to get some really good ideas. Yeah. You're gonna see things you never thought of seeing. You're gonna feel things you never thought you'd feel. And the, the, the images that you're creating, what are they doing? The thoughts that you're creating, they're making more of those chemicals. And now you're feeling more of the, the feeling of your future before it happens. You're, you're giving your body a sampling Mm. a taste of the future before it's happened. Keep doing that enough times, and that feeling is gonna become very familiar to you. There's a lot I wanna unpack there. There's a great image. So um, you asked, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I wanna keep on this topic for a while. Uh, there's a great image on page 123 of your book, Becoming Supernatural, and we'll, we'll put this in the, uh, the YouTube video. I will put it side by side here somewhere when we're editing this up. But you have this image here, which is the body, versus uh, as energy and the body as matter. Mm -hmm. And what happens when you're in an energetic field, uh, when you're a magnet of the energy versus when you're, I guess, reacting in a place of fear, anxiety, and stress. Yeah. Is, that, is that what this is yeah, saying? Let me, see if I can, let me see if I can say this another way. Um, there was a, a researcher uh, out of Yale University that uh, in the 1940s 
that was studying electromagnetic fields around living organisms. And in the 1940s in Yale, at Yale University, nobody was doing this, and he was a, a vitalist. He wanted to understand the unseen fields around living organisms. So he started studying eggs, all kinds of eggs. Chicken eggs, you know, swallow eggs, reptile eggs, snake eggs, salamander eggs, there's all kinds of eggs. And he was using a magnetometer, and what he found was what 100% of the time, no matter what egg he measured, the positive charge was always at the head, mm -hmm. and the negative charge was always at the tail. Well, if you have positive charge on one end and negative charge on the other end, you got an external electromagnetic field called a magnetic field. That's a magnet, right? What happens with human beings is every thought has a frequency. Every thought produces a chemical. So if you keep obsessing about your lack, your lack of finances, your lack of time, your lack of energy, lack, 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 and, and those thoughts. I don't have this, I, I don't need know. this, What, I want what are this. the chemicals you're feeding your body? You're taking thought, it's producing a frequency, and that frequency in the form of chemistry is storing that thought emotionally right in your second center. You feel guilty, you feel unhappy. The moment you feel unhappy, then you generate more thoughts equal to that feeling, which makes more chemicals, and you keep taking energy from the brain and storing it in the body. If you react to people in your life and you feel anger, frustration, whether it's traffic, the news, whatever it is. Parents, you, parents, whatever, boy, girl, yeah. you're drawing from this field, this electromagnetic field, you're tapping that resource and you're making chemistry out of it and the field shrinks. So now, mm. by doing that and living in survival, the body no longer is a magnet. So now you have very little energy in the brain. In fact, 5% of the energy is in the brain, and 95% is stored in the body. Now the body's been conditioned emotionally. So a lot of energy in the body, very little in the brain. Mm. So in our work... Do we want energy to be in the brain? We want to move energy back up to the brain. So what does that do when we move the energy from the body to the brain or the heart? Well, this is a great thing because once it makes it here, it's going up, oh. right? So we do these different meditations and these different techniques to draw that energy right up to the top of the head. Now, when this energy shakes loose and it starts to move, the sympathetic nervous system switches on. And instead of releasing energy out like you're being chased by a predator or you're, you're having an orgasm, that same energy is going up into the brain and the brain switches on and it goes into these very high high frequencies called gamma brainwave patterns. Now the person has an arousal, but the arousal isn't fear. Not an orgasm. Well, in the brain. An, an, an orgasm of the mind. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's energy that's being that released into the brain, mm. and you can only describe it as ecstasy or bliss. So the energy of guilt that was stored from thinking and feeling in the same way releases and it travels up to the brain and it's going back and when it reaches the brain what happens you get more energy in the brain and it begins to produce that external field so you're you're beginning to create a field around your body you can imagine the future as opposed to staying in something from the past well once the energy's moved you're you're, you're going to feel you're going to feel pretty blessed in that moment in fact so we can transfer guilt shame insecurities can, into bliss oh my god yeah, we do it all the time. Momentarily? Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, we do it all the time. And the, the amazing thing is that that rush of energy that's moving into the brain is changing the brain's physiology and producing that field. Now you have energy to heal. Mm. So now the body is a magnet again. And it's as the energy moves up the spinal cord and it starts passing through those spinal nerves and there's a lot of dynamics going on on the body, that energy that was once stored in, in that one of those energy centers that's released is energy to heal, energy to create a new future. You're replenishing your field, and now the body becomes more of a magnet instead of an inert piece of metal with no charge, right? So the person then who's reacting to whatever person or circumstance in their life, the stronger the emotion that they feel towards politics, towards the traffic, towards their girlfriend, Social towards their media, ex, whatever. whatever, the more they're paying attention to it. But where you place your attention is where you place your energy. So we also know that when... It's hard to create from a place of putting attention towards negative energy. Well, you're not creating. What you're doing is you're tying up your vital life force. Mm. You're giving your power away to that person or that circumstance that you could be using to create a new life with. So when a person's sitting in their meditation, and I love doing this, we just had an event in Marco Island, 
I'm going to take people further than where they normally go. I know they're going to go, oh, well, I'm done with my meditation. No, you're not done. We're going to take you to that point where that feeling is so in your face and you can't turn on your cell phone. You can't get up and walk away because a thousand people are not getting up and walking away and you're part of the community. You're sitting in the fire and you have one of two choices. You can let that brain run on, on programs and hardwired mm -hmm. patterns and you, the arousal will drive your brain further out of balance or you'll practice the formula. And as you lower the volume to that emotion, you're gonna take your attention off that person or problem, guess what? Here comes energy back to you. You're taking your power back. And now you're building your field that way. And when that happens, energy starts to move up into the heart. Once mm -hmm. it makes it to the heart, it's going to the brain. So we start seeing people there. They, their hearts naturally open up. And all the things they thought they wanted when they came to the event, they no longer want because they feel like they have it. They don't need it anymore. Because they feel like they, they, they've got the feeling before the experience. So that they feel so whole that they no longer want. And, and they're not looking for their future anymore. You only look for it when you feel lack. Mm. When your body is conditioned emotionally into the future, why would you look for it when it feels like it's already happened? Now, this is where it gets weird. Because now <laughs> things start coming to you and you're no longer in need. And hey, when it comes to you, you go, oh, here. Take it, I don't want it. I just, thought, I just wanted to know that I could create it. And people create a lot of wealth in our events. Yeah. And the first thing a lot of people do is they say, I'm buying a cruise for you. I'm buying you your car. Oh, mom, I'm getting you that house. Why do they do that? Because they're so excited. <laughs> they feel so amazing. And they're thinking, I could do this again. Why would a, a person in lack wouldn't give? Mm. A person who's abundant would give because they know how to create. So mm. now the game changes. It's no longer about the self. Mm. And you, you're, you're doing it because that you know that you can create it. So, so then maintaining that state, when you're in love, yes. when you're in love, in love. In it, in your in, body. You are in love. Not in another No, you're not looking for it. You're, you're in You're not it. looking for it. You would be in lack. When oh. you're in love, there's nothing to do. You're in love. You're 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 the magnet. You you are it. And so you that, are love. Yeah. So the events that come into your life would not only be just a reflection of a relationship with someone that you wanted to be intimate with. You would have meaningful, loving relationships mm. that would enhance that feeling. And when it didn't, you would say, "Ooh, you know what? I don't know. I don't know if this is right for me." You would you would trust that because. You worked really hard mm -hmm. to nurture this, to protect it, to grow it, uh, to, to trust it again, to open up, right? It takes a lot to do this. But we see men in our work. I was on them this week. I, I never let up on those guys. Mm. Big, macho guys. You want to be, you, you want to know what courage is? Let's go. Let's open that heart. And when they start cracking open, I mean, we see people heal from... Yeah from colon cancer and from angina and all, just boom, there it is, there it's not. That's, what, that's what's been stored all down here. Once they open this up and it moves, the body is transforming in that moment. Mm -hmm. it's, the, the system is informing itself. Information is being restored back into the body. So when you get to that point where you, you when you're in lack and separation, time gets really crazy because mm. you want stuff to happen faster and it feels like it's taking forever. That's because you're in separation. When you're in love and you're in connected, you don't want the moment to end. I mean, I had four, three guys over for dinner last night, all these academics. I cooked a meal and a half for these guys, took out great wine, why? I wanted them to be so caught up in the moment mm. that they forgot that we made a new memory. We, made a, we had a great experience. And life then is about experiencing it. Yeah. In love, like I'm not going to be guilty of what I'm, what I'm eating or judge what I'm eating if I've cooked a great meal. Let's eat because the guilt is worse mm. than whatever it is you think is bad for you. So then when you're feeling those elevated emotions and you're locked in love, then, then you see life through the lens of love and there's compassion. Like uh. you could look at your greatest adversary the person that threw you under the bus, mm. and you've overcome yourself and you've done the work. They've stolen from you, they've tried you to could talk bad about you behind your back. Trashing they've... on you, all that stuff. You'll look at them and you'll see a part of yourself that you used to be that you no longer are, and you have nothing 
but understanding and compassion wow. for like, wow, I just, I feel for that person. They're, they're hurting, they're struggling. I used to be like that, but you're no longer that. When you're that, then they push your buttons. When you're not- <laughs> You're reactive to that. Because you're equal, but you're, when you've overcome it, why would you do that? You would see them as somebody struggling, just like you see a child who's throwing a tantrum, just like, oh, they're gonna get Now here, I mean, I've got so many questions around this, but one thing quickly, how often do you find yourself in reaction mode when someone throws you under the bus? Whether it's someone honking at you in a car and you say, ah, this, how often do you get back to that place and like, cause we're, aren't we conditioned to kind of react? And Dude, respond? I react every day. So I react, do. oh my God. I react every day. But the fundamental question is, how long are right, you gonna react? Right, right. So shortening the refractory period of your emotional reactions is that kind of intelligence where we're keeping ourselves out of the past. Mm -hmm. Justified, valid or not, the only person that that's affecting is you. And then you have to ask yourself, is it loving to me? Well, if you can't control that emotional reaction, then you're a junkie and you're on a bad trip and you're overdosing. Mm -hmm. But if you know that you're overdosing, you gotta get beyond your rational mind because you'll say, why are you this way? Oh, because they should. All right, by you doing that, is it making more of those chemicals? Yeah, why were you doing that? To make you feel more like it's, it's justified. Mm -hmm. So then this takes, well, so I, I excuse myself many times in one day. Because you'll be, I'm in reaction mode, I'm like, let me step I'm like, aside. Are you, like, I'll be like, are you kidding me? What, who, what did they do? And then I'll be like, I'll, we're not gonna make a decision in this, in this state. state. So give me a minute. Oh, wow. I go, take a few breaths, get out of that state, remember my future, where I'm going. It's so much more important than the present moment. I just gotta condition my body into that future. And now it takes sometimes a Herculean effort, I have to tell you. You, <laughs> can, you, you can ask my staff, I'll be, in my, I'll be in there 15, 20, 30 minutes. Sometimes I'll say I worked, it took me an hour. But to get, to get what, back to a peaceful in the, state. In the, yeah. in, 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 the, in the expanse of all eternity, if I don't overcome that emotion, then I'm in my past and that's karma because that emotion's gonna drive my behaviors and thoughts and I'm gonna be predictable. My past yeah. is gonna look, my future's gonna look a lot like my past. So if I'm soulfully on the journey, mm. then what matters the most is being able to learn the skill of mm. self-regulation. So in our, in our events, when we see people that can do brain and heart coherence, they know the formula. When I look at their brain scans and I'm like, Lewis, great brain. Hey, you got, you can, I, I see you can hold that heart coherence for 45 minutes. Great, now let's put you on a pole at 55 feet in the air. <laughs> let's get a heart rate monitor on you and let's see what you're gonna do up there. Do you wanna be able to self-regulate there? Because if you can there, it's not like I'm trying to give you an adrenaline rush. Actually, I'm trying to do the opposite. I want you to settle your brain and body back down. Go against thousands of years of programming like fear and teach your body in that moment how to regulate. I guarantee mm. you, if you go a little further than what you did and you stay conscious, and instead of throwing in a program and rushing through it and trying to get it over with, you start breathing, you start getting back in your heart, you start getting centered, you work against those chemicals, I guarantee you when you walk into your life, you're gonna, the moment you see something doing, you're gonna catch on right away, you're gonna catch yourself. Now that, that saves you a lot of energy and a lot of time. Because if you're able to change it then instead of four hours later where you're just yeah. gone. Or you've already reacted. Yeah, and, 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 and you've, you've done things you said, I, you say I should have never done that, I should yeah. have never said that. That's what those emotions do because those emotions make us really primitive. Really primitive. We're either going to become very primitive. We're going to become antagonistic and angry and Defensive. aggressive. We're yeah. going to run in fear and or we're going to hide. Like that's really the options. So how do I mean? Let's talk about a practical scenario where someone's in a relationship five, ten, twenty years, married or not married, and both parties have a pattern of defensiveness, of passive aggressiveness, of reacting when they don't like something. And then one person starts to transform and they do your work or they do meditation work and they really start to connect to their heart and their mind and they start healing the trauma of the past and the other person hasn't caught up yet. Mm. How does someone either inspire the other person to come on this train mm -hmm. with them mm -hmm. and elevate their thoughts or if they are unwilling to, is there a way to be in a happy relationship if your partner is still in reaction mode mm. more than you. Wow. 
Um, well, uh, again, speaking from my present state of ignorance, because I'm on a journey also. Mm -hmm. I will tell you this, that one of the things that happens in, uh, when people start to come across information and knowledge that's really valuable, and they want to share it with the person next to them or share it with their lover, yeah. whatever. But if they're in a relationship for 15 years and they have a lot of emotional agreements yes. with people and things and they're in a lot of habits, we, we, we only uh, accept, believe, and surrender to information that's equal to our emotional state. So sometimes it bounces off the person and if the person's really enthusiastic, then, the, then they're really like, whoa, what well, is up down. with you? are yeah. changing in front of me. I don't like you this way. We, we had a thing going here. We could pick apart anybody or anything. <laughs> now you're not showing up equal to my memory. You're unpredictable. You're in the unknown. You're unsafe. Fight. Yeah, you're the, the unknown is unsafe, right? So a lot of times mm. the enthusiasm is the first thing that starts creating con disconnection. But if the person goes, that's amazing. That's really cool. Say it again. Like they're ready to hear the information. Those people are going to evolve together, mm -hmm. right? If the person just kind of looks and says, oh my God, my wife's on the Kool-Aid or whatever it is. <laughs> this person is, you know, they, they changed their medication. I don't know what's happening with them. Then that person that is trying to explain it philosophically is just looking for someone to exchange information with. That person may not be the person. He may just like Sunday, Sunday football games and Monday night football and hanging out and drinking beer. And they fell in love when they were the same, mm -hmm. right? So now the next step is to find the person that you can exchange that information with because you want to understand it better so you can begin to use it. Now, mm. you have to stop preaching to that person. That's the first thing you have to do. In other words, show up happy. Show up transformed. Be the example. And then one of two things will happen. I tell my kids this all the time. If you're happy, then that person is going to want to get some of that. And they're going to ask you, all right, so what the, what, what the hell are you doing? Like, all of a sudden, you're like happy. They're either going to go, I want some of that, and they're going to evolve together. Now, if, they're, if they don't, and then you come down here, and compromise yourself to meet them on that level, they're gonna take some of your energy and you're gonna be like, who am I? Resentful, I just, angry, yeah, all these things. You didn't, you didn't respond the way I wanted to. Now we're angry and we're back down here, right? Mm -hmm. But if you stay happy and they come up and they meet you there, then you're still happy. If you don't come down and you stay happy and they stay there and they move away, guess what? You stay happy. You're still happy. Yeah. Is this so, so then, People in relationships will compromise themselves out of, out of obligation, out of necessity, out of obedience, mm. out of programs. And at the end of the relationship, they don't even remember who they are because they compromised who or so many aspects of themselves. That's why you hear in a lot of people when they go through a breakup, they're like, oh, I, I lost myself in of this course, relationship. Because they're refining myself. They were changing. They were changing in a way that kept the relationship safe. Why do so many relationships do this in general? Because nobody they... wants to tell the truth. Mm. If you sat down and said, let's get vulnerable. Let's sit down. Let's open our hearts. I have a bottle of wine. Let's just, let's get vulnerable. Hey, I'm, a, I'm this. How are you doing? Like, what's really going on in there? Are you happy? And then be, be an adult. Like, you're mm -hmm. unhappy. I'm unhappy too. You want to try to stick this out? All right. Well, if I were to say, if I could get in my heart and I was looking at myself, these are the things that make me unhappy that I want to, with me and that I want to change. It's not only you, it's me, what I want to change. And the other person said, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck. I'm stuck too. I don't know how to change. I'm, you know, I'm doing this. I'm drinking more or whatever. I, mm -hmm. I got to stop. And, and, and it, it's important enough for me. This relationship is important enough it's for me that I'm willing yeah. to make the change and let's figure out how to do it together. That, that to me, or I've done this. Hey, are we, I can't feel it anymore. I can't feel that feeling anymore. I think I think it's time to move on. I love you, but it's turned. I've changed, and I still love you. But I gotta go. I mean, it's just different. We don't have the same yeah. interests anymore. We've grown in different directions, and and out of respect, let's let's do that together, yeah. right? So so those relationships still stay fertile. They're still wonderful. They're still I, you keep them alive, but they've transformed into mm -hmm. something else. It's the not telling the truth about how you really feel because would make you vulnerable and that may mean someone one-ups you or you may get uh, uh, 
uh, shocked mm -hmm. or uh, uh, you know um, rejected in some way. I think the thing that the place in my life right now, I'm 37. The thing in my life and the relationship I'm in now, I'll tell my girlfriend often. I'm like, I'm so grateful that we're on this journey together. And there's cultural differences. You've been with a Latin woman in the past. There's cultural differences. There's language differences. There's understand belief differences. All these things. The thing that I tell her is like, listen, I want to be with you for as long as we can be together. If that's our lives, great. Mm -hmm. I'm committed to you. But I'm also committed to myself. And if we're not able to line up yeah. consistently over time, and if it's we're both suffering and we're yeah. unable to make it work, it's okay. It's okay. We can yeah. break up. Yeah. It's okay. And this is the first time I've been in a place where I'm okay with her and okay not with her. Yeah. And she that's is healthy. as well. Yeah. And so we were able to talk about these things from a healthy space not needing it to mm -hmm. work out, right? Because we're not lacking, right? Because of course, because you're, you you feel differently. You you've, you you're using the love. Look, look. The truth is, if you truly are love, yes, then you will be challenged always to a greater level of love. Mm. And and I have had enough mystical experiences where I thought you just can't have any more love than this really? until I've had another <laughs> experience, and I'm like, wow, there's even more, right? So. When in love, in a loving relationship, I, I have three children and I only want the best for them. That's it. So if you truly love someone and you want the best for them and they need to go, you gotta love them. Yeah. Just as, just as long as it's, it's, they got that kind of clear agreement with each other, like, I'm gonna go. I just gotta go. And yeah, it's gonna hurt, but that's just, that's, if, if there's truly love, you would want that for that person, their best, right? Yeah. So then, it's not something that we do that, that is a, a recipe. It's trial and error. Mm -hmm. and, and I think the number one thing that I've learned over the years in any relationship, it's about awareness. It's about who am I being in this moment? How conscious can I stay? How am I speaking? How am I acting? What is the tone of my voice? How much more can I give? How can I forgive? How can, how, if I'm having problems forgiving somebody, I would think about something that I may have done in my life that mm. I would want forgiveness for. Mm. And I would think about how I want to be forgiven and I would forgive that person in the same way that I would be forgiving myself. And in a sense, I am forgiving myself, right? So we have to see it as this illusion of separation, this illusion of three-dimensional reality. This is, this is the plane where we demonstrate love. I mean, yeah. we came from source, we came from singularity, we came from pure love and down into density, fooled by our senses into separation. Wow. And the survival hormones create more separation. They, they arouse us to put more attention on the illusion, on the objects, the hologram of three-dimensional reality, and we move further away from love. So, so, fear is not the opposite of love, it's the separation from it. Anger is not the opposite of love, it's the separation from love. Pain, suffering is not, the opposite of love, it's the separation from love. Mm. So then as people heal into wholeness by, by learning how to create coherence in their brain and heart, the side effect of that a lot of times are dramatic changes in their health. And then more importantly, from that place, they could have been sexually abused, emotionally abused, physically abused. They will look at their entire past from that place and not want to change anything in their past because it brought them to that moment. Mm. And they'll see the lessons and they'll have compassion and forgiveness because they're in a different consciousness. Only when you're unhappy with yourself, unhappy with your life, are you going to dig up the past and find the reason why you are that way. Mm. And 50% and, and, and of that story isn't even the truth. You embellish the story oh, right. to, to, to make it sound so hard that nobody can change. Well, I can't change. This is, it was way too hard. And the, the research on memory is, majority of time people are telling a story that isn't even the truth. To me, they're reliving a miserable life they didn't even have, wow. only to reaffirm their emotional state. So you catch yourself in the midstream, you know, you catch yourself talking and feeling that, you catch yourself, that's a victory. To me, that's a victory. Right, it's because you're gonna be in reaction, Of right? course, We're but, gonna have feelings and emotions. But the, you ask me, oh, so I react? Yeah, every day, right. but I get better at it. And I always say, okay, if I was in that same circumstance with that same person, I got the same or similar news, how would Joe Dispenza show up more evolved? If I don't know the answer to that, 
I'm going to find someone who had a similar experience. I'm going to read what they did, wow. and I'm going to rehearse that. I'm going to rehearse it in my mind so much so that I'm priming my brain for the experience. Now I want it to happen so that I could... It's not about being right. It's not about being... Any of those, it's, it's really about my evolution. So then, so then that victory to me creates more wholeness. Yeah. And so that more wholeness means I'm less lack and separation. If I'm lack, less lack and separation, then I'm relaxed in the present moment. And that's the, that's the beauty of being alive is that we want the moment to last. We want to be so present. It's so good. Mm. We don't want to leave it. So love, people, people want love, but what's the sponsoring thought behind that? They want joy, that love brings them joy. Before we continue this video, make sure to subscribe below and turn on the notification bell right now so you don't miss out on these great videos every single day. People want abundance, but they don't really want abundance. They want freedom. That's what they really want. They want to be able to do whatever they want. They want to have freedom. Yes. You know, people want a mystical experience. No, they want to be blown away. They want to feel awe. They, they want to be in awe of life. People want to be healed. Uh, no, they, they want to be whole. Mm. They want to feel wholeness. Uh, they want to feel whole again. So if you're looking for the reason uh, why you want certain things, you want it for an emotion. The emotion is the, is the payoff from the experience. It it's the payoff. And then we get to experience it with our senses and it's greater than we imagined. And I'm telling you, when, when, when the reality starts organizing itself to reflect your energy and it starts showing up it's in your life, what kind of feeling do you feel when you start seeing those synchronicities? You feel excitement, joy, inspiration. That's the energy you're going to use to create the next one. And so yes. people in our work, you know, this is the thing that I'm a pr proud like of. Synchronicities happen daily when you're Because in your energy is synchronized. Yeah. Your energy is synchronized to a future. So the future that you're seeing in your mind before it happened and emotionally embracing so much so that your brain and body look like it's already happened. Well, if it looks physically like it's already happened, relax, because it's going to come to you. Mm. So then people in this work do the work every day, and that's the thing I'm the most proud of, not because I want them to do it out of obligation or to please God or do the right thing or whatever else, whatever the programs have been for, for thousands of years. They don't want the magic to end. Mm -hmm. They just like, I don't know what this is, but I'm having these incredible lucid moments. I'm, I can't believe I just got this opportunity and wow, this is happening. And there, every synchronicity does what? It creates the energy and the belief that there could be more, but they're not trying to control it. They're not trying to predict it. In fact, it's, it's none of their business how it happens or when it happens. That's, if you can predict how it's gonna happen, that's the known. Yeah. The unknown is like, I'm so happy, I would never try to control it. I'm not gonna leave the present moment. And that's when you're the vortex, you know, to experiences. And mm. so that's the difference between creating as source or praying as source or creating or praying to source. Separation is begging, ah. trying. Now, you are, you are connected, you feel divine. You feel you are the source. You are connected to source. Yes. And so this place, is the bridge to that. Once it's here, then there are, there, are, there are emotions and energies and frequencies that are just inevitable. You, you, can't, you can't describe how much love that is or yeah. the feeling that you feel. Do emotions create thoughts or do thoughts create emotions? Both. So think about this. Some people wake up in the morning. Uh -huh. Your brain is a record of the past. Yeah. The first thing they do is they think about their problems. Those <laughs> yeah. problems are memories that are etched in the brain that are connected to certain people, certain objects, certain things at a certain time and place. The moment they wake up in the morning and they think about their problems, they're thinking in the past. Mm. If you believe that your thoughts have something to do with your destiny, well, you're already in your past. Every one of those problems, since we've experienced it, has an emotion associated with it. So then all of a sudden, they start feeling unhappy. The moment they feel unhappy, now the body's in the past because thoughts are the language of the brain and feelings are the language of the body. Huh. So now that once they go, oh. Say that one more time. Thoughts are the language of the brain, feelings are the language of the body. Mm. So the moment they start feeling those feelings, now their body's in the past. So now they, they get back and they, they started off with a clean slate. They didn't feel anything. And then they're like, I'm back to feeling unhappy. Okay, I'm back to myself again. Ah. So because they'd rather feel unhappy than feel, not feel anything. So naturally, the void of that emotion 
is influencing, the body's influencing the mind, the brain to think, so it produces the chemicals for it to feel. Uh -huh. Some people just wake up in the morning and they don't feel anything, and then all of a sudden they just look for that feeling. They just, some people need a thought to do it, some people can just bring up the feeling, right? Wow. So then they cling to that emotion because at least it's the known. Mm -hmm. So some people have emotions that influence thoughts, some people are more analytical, they have thoughts that influence feelings, mm. but it's a loop, right? It's, it's that cycle of thinking and feeling. What's the formula to get out of that quickly? <laughs> Keep mentioning the formula, like there's a formula, if, if that's yeah. happening, and I know we've had thousands of people that go through your books and your med uh, audio meditations, I think you have some new ones coming out here soon, and they've been to your workshops, which I think, go to the workshop, because it's gonna be a game changer, I can't wait till I can go, but, I keep inviting you. Guess I what? Know, you can't happen. come anymore. You're not allowed to come. <laughs> I'm okay. coming. No, you can't come now. So maybe this will get him to come. <laughs> exactly. Now I'm there. Uh, what is a formula, like a one to two minute formula when someone notices, oh, I'm feeling something and then my thoughts are uh, supporting that feeling and I'm just staying in this loop. What's the one or two minute formula that they could just implement in the morning, at night, whenever yeah. to help them? Well, I'm gonna give you two examples, okay, because there's not just one way to do this. Of course, um, yeah. um, So, if you're, if you're truly in the business of change or creating your life, that's a big responsibility, yeah. right? I mean, like, we, we, we ran our event, I said to the audience, okay, nobody, nobody forced you to come here, right? You came here on your own. You took the risk in coming here. By coming here, you also agree that you create your reality, mm. that you're responsible for yourself and your life. So if something happens to you, you can't blame anybody because of that. It's your responsibility to take care of you, right? So then the fundamental question is, and I ask myself this all the time, at what point do I stop believing that I create my life? At what point? When things go bad, then all of a sudden it's, I didn't create that. That person is doing it to me, right? So if we, can, if we can wire that in our brains, right? That our reaction and response to an environmental condition is causing us to go back to the past. Mm -hmm. That's what the emotion is. The familiar emotion is the past. And I'm on the journey and I catch myself doing that. If I'm truly in the practice every day and I can cultivate a feeling, not, not, not on the spot then, that you, you, you're not prepared. Your meditation is the preparation of mind and body for this. So I don't get up from my meditation until I'm in love with life. I don't, mm. I don't create anything that's gonna be unlimited until I feel unlimited. Until and you're I, in that space. And if I'm practicing feeling unlimited every day, I'm practice connecting to the emotions of my future, I'm, I'm out of the bleachers and I'm on the field. Mm. If you're in the bleachers and you're trying to not react to people in, in circumstances, you don't have the practice or the skill set on how to create that emotion because you haven't been practicing creating it. And why do we close our eyes and do it? Because the environment is so seductive. Why do we sit still and not move? Because you're gonna wanna get up and pee and eat and have a cup of coffee and <laughs> feel. So, so now you're telling your body, hey, stay. I'm gonna feed you. Yeah, you're gonna take a shower, you're gonna get coffee, you can play with your cell phone, right. you can text, you can talk trash, you can do anything you want, but right now, you're not the mind. Mm. I'm the mind and you're gonna sit and stay till I'm done. And when I condition you to the emotions of the future and I get a very clear image of who I'm no. going to be this day and I'm not gonna get up until I feel that way, I guarantee you, you're gonna come up against all those unconscious thoughts. They're gonna come up right there. I, I want people to, I want them to see it. I want them to become so familiar with it so conscious, if they wouldn't go unconscious, they wouldn't let that thought, I can't ever slip by their mm. awareness unchecked. They've done the work in the beginning of the day. They suppress those circuits in the brain and nerve cells that no longer fire together, no longer wire together. You're, you're breaking down the old personality. Ooh. And so you say, ah, oh, your body wants to get up, I gotta pee, I wanna have a couple, I'm gonna check my, and you, you watch your body wanna get up and you go, hey, 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 get over here. <laughs> you, you, 
get back into this present moment. And wow. you, every time you do that, it's a victory. You're executing a will that's greater than an unconscious program. And most people lose their free will to a program because they do the same thing today as they did yesterday. Their body's on autopilot and it's dragging them into the same future habitually based on what they did in the past. So now you're sitting there and it's just a little uncomfortable and you want to quit and your body, and you go, no. And you get over here and you bring it back. Now, some people say, I can't meditate, but really they're actually doing it right. That's a victory too. Yeah. And then you do that and you start watching how you're training your body back into the present moment. Then it's your body says, well, you know, Lewis, it's, uh, <laughs> this, it's 8, 8.30 in the morning. This is usually when you watch the news and throw a tirade and get angry. Right, And I'm react. Just, and you're what, sitting here with your eyes closed and you're off schedule. So why don't we just get agitated about anything? So the body starts trying to create images in your mind. So you remember your ex, you remember your problems. So you could feel that agitation. What if you watched your body do that and you said, no, 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 no. I'm not gonna give my power away to the past or that person or that circumstance in my life. You get that body back in the present moment. You lower the volume to that emotion. Whew, that's a victory. You're telling the body it's no longer the mind that you're the mind. Now, that kind of work is tedious in the beginning, but I watch people because when I have them do that, it starts stretching their boundaries. Mm -hmm. The known self, that little box, starts to move into the unknown and they survive. And all of a sudden they're more relaxed in the present moment, the unknown, and they start feeling more satisfied. So now they're more ready to create. So the preparation for the day mm. is to remind yourself of who you no longer want to be, ah. to know thyself, to become so familiar with, the word meditation means to become familiar with, so conscious of your unconscious programs, you're not gonna go unconscious, why? Because you did, you did battle today with that personality that's creating the same personal reality. And if your personality is made up of how you think, how you act, and how mm. you feel, and you wanna create a new personal reality, then you gotta change your personality. And that's gonna mean then you're gonna become so conscious of those unconscious programs that you're no longer the program. You're the consciousness observing the program. Disentangling from that is not easy. That's why most people won't do it. That's why they get on their cell phone and say, let me just create a little dopamine by just seeing if I got a text from somebody I like. You're, mm. and then your phone's over there and you're no longer regulating with something outside of you. This is, this is game time. So then if you said, what thoughts do I want to fire and wire in my brain? Hmm? With my attention and my intention, I'm gonna make that the loudest voice in my head. Mm. And if you keep firing and wiring, that hardware is gonna become a software program and it's gonna be a new voice. Right. It's gonna, you installed it, no, no magic there. And if you <laughs> said, hey listen, I sucked yesterday with my staff meeting. I was off, I want another shot at it. How would greatness show up, mm. school of greatness? Yeah. How would greatness show up for the staff meeting? I got another shot, I got 10 fingers, 10 toes, I'm alive, my heart's beating, I didn't fail, I got another shot today. All right, what, what do I know about myself that I can do? The act of closing your eyes and rehearsing who you're going to be Gosh, so is installing more hardware. The brain's gonna look like you already did it. Now it's no longer in the past. It's primed for the future. Keep doing it, and it's gonna become a software program, and you're gonna start looking pretty great. People are gonna go like, wow. Feeling great. You're, gonna, you're going to demonstrate greatness. Yeah. Well, but there's no magic there, because you're gonna think, what is greatness? Okay, I like what this person said, I like what that person said, I like what I read here, I love my experience of when I've demonstrated, and the frontal lobe's gonna create a beautiful, beautiful understanding of what, how to evolve your experience. And when you, just no different than learning how to dance, learning a sport, learning a lines if you're an actor or an actress, a, a musician, you, you rehearse all the time. And the rehearsal is actually priming the brain for the experience. So now your brain is ready for the day. It's different than just going, oh, I'm not gonna react to my boss. Well, well you haven't done the work to come up with how to, how to overcome that and then what did you install so you have circuit, you have raw materials to, to use? Now here's yeah. the hardest part. Can you teach your body emotionally what it would feel like if you, if you arrived at your future? And, and can you say, I'm not gonna get up until I feel that way? Now this is, mm. this is good work here because you'll have to come up with that emotion and get beyond the shame, the guilt, the unworthiness, the pain, the suffering, and this is battle. This is battle because your brain is going to keep going to something that's going to want to make you feel that way. Then the analytical mind is going to say, you can't do this, it's too hard, why don't you quit? And that's where everybody stops. But right on the other side of that is love. Mm. Right on the other side of that is gratitude. 
Right on the other side of that is freedom, right? So then if the person's willing to go a little further and practice a way to do that, and they could get in touch with that emotion, and they can feel it. And when I feel it, I always say, and usually when it's really good, I say, remember this feeling. Memorize this feeling. Memorize. I want to... Make a I, snapshot of that feeling. I want to I want to know, I want to be able to bring this feeling up on command. So I'll let it go. Mm. And then I'll go back and say, let me see if I can do it again. Why am I trying to do it again? To remember. Remembering is creating the circuitry to be able to produce it again. It's going to become a skill. Now, I have something to walk into my condition in my life where I'm reacting. And now I have a plan. I've primed my brain and body to the future instead of the past. I've suppressed the past. Yeah. So now I have, I'm, I'm closing my eyes, disconnecting from the environment, overcoming my body, not thinking about the predictable future, the familiar past and time. I'm in the present moment. I'm ready to create. Why? Because I want to present myself to the world as an evolved version of yesterday. Real quick, before you go to next, I hear a lot of therapists will mention we should not suppress emotions. I'm hearing you mention just there suppressing the past. No, I would never say suppress. I would say, at what point are you done feeling that emotion? Gotcha. You want to so keep feeling feel it? Go, if, if you're not doing on. anything wrong. You're just yeah, taking yeah. too long. I mean, gotcha, like, gotcha. I, I'm not going to tell you to not feel an emotion. I feel emotions, but again, I'm just going to move through them. I'm a super passionate person. And if I'm yeah. going in, I'm going all in. I'm not going half, halfway. But when I feel and I can catch myself, that's pretty cool. Gotcha. Because yes. now I can change it. No one, no one, nothing is doing that to me. I'll feel it. I'm not sitting there going, I'm not doing that. I'm not, there's no tool set there. I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm steeping in the emotion. That's not it. I am saying, okay, I'm angry. In, the, in this moment in eternity, Joe Dispenza, what do you got? What do you got? This is the moment you're going to remember because mm -hmm. people who heal, people who have transcendental moments, people who break through, people who have the, the wealth, the freedom, when they look back at their life and they see all the days they chose themselves to show up for their meditation, mm. when they look back at those past moments, they're not looking back at the easy meditations. Mm -hmm. They're not falling in love with the person who had the good med, they're, they're falling in love with the person who sat in the fire. They're, they're, they remember those moments where they were like, I didn't give up on me, I believed in myself, I believed there was something on the other side of this feeling. I stuck with it. And all of a sudden it starts to change. And for some people it takes a little longer than others, but they're on it. Mm -hmm. And so then when they look back at their past and they see all those times it was hard, and they, they went a little further, they're gonna fall in love with that yeah. person. And now their future self, who's already transformed, is drawing their past self to them in love. There's, that's, how, that's how reality so is. So our, our future self in the future or no, there, in the No, there's moment. a future you right. that's already exists. You just got to get there. Right. And he's, he's in love with you. And the mm. only way you're going to get there is by you being in love with you. And being in love in the past. Yeah, but so then what is love then? So then huh. people think they confuse love with pleasure. Yes. Like a manicure or shopping spree, that's not love, that's pleasure. Mm -hmm. and, and the more whole we are, the less need for pleasure we have. You sit in the fire. I watched 1,025 people last week transform themselves. Mm. In the beginning, I was trying to find the door. I, they were, they were, I was bouncing off them, I just wouldn't quit. And then they started doing the work. They came up against themselves, they got frustrated, they got impatient, I kept reminding them, their brain's going into high beta, their arousal is driving them further out of balance, and they started tempering the animal. And they started, I took them a little further, and they sat through the fire, and all of a sudden it wasn't about the mystical experience, it wasn't about the wealth, it was about learning the formula. It wasn't about what they wanted. It was about overcoming themselves, they're learning the formula on how in that moment, if they could just relax and keep practicing, that little box begins to expand and now there's more, more, more room for them to relax in the unknown. I've stretched them outside of the known and they survived. And I keep stretching them and all of a sudden they're more present. And so they wanted, they wanted to come to the edge in the next meditation and go a little further. It was no longer me saying you gotta go. They were they wanted the edge. They wanted to see what was standing in the way between them and their new relationship. Mm -hmm. Them and their healing. What, what was that thing that I want to remove? I'm going to, if not now, when? Right? So they wanted to take it on because they, they forgot about their cell phones. We did it during the week of election, so nobody would care about us. 
They, they didn't right. care about the election. <laughs> they didn't care about wow. any disease. They were immersed and, and they retreated from their lives. Now, back to your question. I guarantee you those people, when they face circumstances in their life now, they're ready for their environment. Mm. In fact, they've lowered the volume to so many of those emotions. When people slash out at them or do things, they're gonna go, oh, come here. Are you hurting? Get over here, right, I'm gonna right. give you a hug. Not like, oh, you know, they're not gonna do that. They're gonna be like, come here, I love you. Get over here, yeah. are you okay? It's just, they're not, there's not that anymore. They, they, they kinda, they, they're kinda ready. So, mm. so the formula then, to answer your question, <laughs> is brain and heart coherence. And when you're in stress and you're in survival, when you're in danger, the arousal of the stress hormones creates a heighten, heightening of our senses and we become materialists and we narrow our focus on the material world and that's reality now. And when mm. we start trying to control reality and predict it and we have the perception that things are getting worse, all of a sudden we're shifting our attention to one person, to another person, to another problem, to another thing, to another text. And every one of those things, there's a neurological network in the brain. So the arousal of the stress hormones causes the brain to start firing incoherently. And now there's no energy in the brain because the incoherence is diminishing energy. It's waves that are canceling each other out. The brain goes into like this, quiescence of no activity, but we're very little, very little performance. So then we said, okay, let's teach people how to take their attention off of everything known in this memory bank of the known self, the autobiographical self, the artifact of the past. Mm. Let's teach them how to go from a narrow object focus on anything material that's known in this three-dimensional reality to broadening their focus, mm. to putting their attention on energy, nothing, space, and going from a convergent focus to a divergent focus and opening their focus, we started noticing that the brain started to synchronize. The different compartments started to unify and the brain started functioning in a more holistic state and the person started feeling more chilled, more poised, more clear. And what sinks in the brain mm. links in the brain. Mm. So you start seeing this kind of integration. And we can call people on the stage now and I can say, would you show the audience on a brain scan how to go in the gamma? Give me one second. Boom, they go right in the gamma. Wow. Can you show them how to go in the alpha coherent brainwave patterns? I can, give me a minute. It's alpha uh, like negative now, state or? Alpha is like that creative state. Oh, when, creative when, state. The, when the brain starts slowing down analytical you know, wow, processing. Okay. So gamma then, is what? It's like super consciousness. That's like, that's the, like the, that's the big stuff. Yeah, that's, that's the like, highest level that your brain can go into. Yeah, it's a kind of a very fast frequency, but our gamma frequencies that we record in our work is so coherent. Like, let me see how I could say this. When you're in beta, right? We're in beta right now. Mm -hmm your brain is busy integrating all this information. What I'm saying, what you're feeling, the temperature in the room, the lights, your back, you know, everything else, your brain's gotta figure all this out. It's gotta create meaning between what's going on out there and what's going on in here. If I said to you, Lewis, I forgot to tell you you're gonna take a test today, you would perk up a little bit more, right? The light bulb will get a little brighter. Yeah. It's mid-range beta. But when you're in high beta, that's when you're really, really out of balance. When you're angry, when you're frustrated, when you're impatient, when you're vigilant, you know, that's, the brain is in very, very high, heightened state. And that's that high beta. High beta, that's. It's when you're in a negative state. Yeah, exactly, you're in survival. And people don't think they can control that. So they start analyzing in that state and they make their brain worse. They get overly focused, overly analytical. And now mm. you gotta get beyond that analytical mind to get into the operating system to change those unwanted habits and behaviors. So when you disconnect from your environment and you close your eyes and there's less stimulation coming mm. in, we play music in the background, you're not eating, you're not smelling, you're not tasting, you're not feeling, there's less sensory information. Naturally, this mechanism starts to slow down and so there's less information yeah. and you go into alpha and you cross the analytical mind. And what separates the conscious mind from the subconscious mind is the analytical mind, so now, you're suppressing the, 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 the analytical mind that's saying you can, it's too hard, the voice goes away. And in alpha now, we're not looking for any kind of alpha, we're looking for coherent alpha. So as they open their focus and they sense space, the act of sensing and feeling mm. causes them to stop thinking and analyzing. So you start seeing energy leave the neocortex, right? If they do it really well and the body starts to fall asleep or it feels so comfortable 
that it can rest in the present moment and let it almost fall asleep and you're still conscious and awake, now you're in theta. Mm. Now that's a that's hypnotic your, state. Your body's like vibrating almost. Yeah, the, the door between the conscious mind and the subconscious mind is wide open. It's very programmable, very programmable. What should we be saying or thinking in You're not that doing state? anything. You shouldn't be thinking now, anything. No, the formula is when you sense, you'll watch, you'll, we do this naturally when we go to bed at night. Yes. But now we're just taking you down the steps so you know the terrain, how to get there. In theta, when you're in that state, you can reprogram, you can rewrite the program. It's easier because you're out of this, this thinking brain. So we shouldn't be thinking to reprogram or just You won't be thinking, you'll itself. be rehearsing. Rehearsing. You'll see yourself doing something. What should we rehearse? Whatever you want. What do you want? You want you want to be an excellent be handball player? Right. You yeah. want to be the top? Yeah, yeah. You got to rehearse. So you visualize what you want to create. Yeah, you, you imagine. But But you, it's better to do it when your body is very relaxed, or better yet, you forgot about your body. That's a better way to say Ooh. it, yeah. So then, when that theta happens, people are usually sitting like this, looking at the television, just before they go to bed at night, they're half awake and they're half asleep, and they're telling them you need a flu shot, they're telling uh, you, you, need, you, know, you, have to, you need this drug, you have this problem. Eat this food, yeah. It's going in, the analytical facilities are in the back seat, they're, you're, they're getting programmed to make that choice. They're getting programmed in some way. So they're suggestible to information. So now you could be suggestible to your own auto suggestions or information that you would want to rewrite as a program. So if you said in alpha or theta, mm, I'm just not happy with how I did with my kids today. I, 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 gotta, I need another shot at it. And, and you're relaxed and you're present and you start reviewing how you're gonna be with them, I guarantee you, you start installing the hardware there. Right. You start rewriting the program, and you're so present that you can go through it. Then you go through it the next time, it's a little easier. Yeah. You go through it the next time, it's a little easier. You go through it the next time, your mind starts to wander, you, ah, you catch yourself, you come back, right. you do it again. Well, what are you doing? You're, you're rewriting the program and installing it, firing and wiring. Right? So mm. you can't do that in beta because you're too distracted, right? It's the daily practice of mental rehearsal in that state which allows you to manifest and attract the two. Exactly. Ex exactly. So whether that's a relationship, whether that's the career you want, the How about how about the art of life? Yeah. I mean relationships, job, whatever it is. Yeah. Like money. Like whatever. people always go to the things that are easy. Like in our work. We pick for the ones that you don't want to look at. We're going to go for that first because we take care of that. The rest gets easy, right? So, so then when there's an integration and people are in theta and they know how to regulate, then something crazy happens. So then when that door opens and their eyes are closed and they're not getting information from the environment, not from the TV, and you teach them how to tune into frequency and energy and frequency carries information and they're in theta, and the brain starts to process in latent systems that energy and that frequency mm. and transduces it into a mystical profound experience in imagery, the arousal that takes place in the brain is gamma. They're having a very full-on sensory experience, but not with their senses. In other words, whatever's in going on, yeah. it's more real than you and I sitting here, right? right? So. Imagine if your senses were heightened right now by 50%. Everything you're seeing, hearing, smelling, t your awareness of the environment would be heightened, right? Awareness is consciousness. Yeah. So now we see these coherent alpha patterns lead to these coherent theta patterns and these waves are so orderly that that wave of theta is a carrier wave. And then here comes gamma. That energy just bursts up into the brain from the body, the gates open up and the arousal is not fear. The arousal is not pain. The arousal is not aggression and anger. The arousal is ecstasy. And, but here's the deal. This is alpha. If we had 100 people in the room and we were doing this, pretty easy to clap like this, right? Mm -hmm. That's coherence. We're rhythm, and that's good. Then if we went in to theta, it would be a lot slower, right? There's very little neocortical activity, so it's easy to create coherence there. But when you go to gamma, it's like this. Now try to imagine everybody, 100 people doing that. This is how orderly the neurons in your brain are. They're clapping so fast and they're all in rhythm. So how would you describe that kind of orderliness except bliss? How would you describe wholeness? What, what is it? I don't know, love, what, whatever that is. 
that arousal is that is so out, outside of normal. Mm. It's not a little bit of gamma. It's not a lot of gamma. It's not a lot, a lot of gamma. It's a supernatural amount of gamma. It's way outside of normal. Now that person is touching the divine. That person is touching that unified field. Their consciousness is merging with the consciousness of the unified field. There's no separation. They are connected in the arousal the interaction with that energy, they're taking something with them. Yeah. And sometimes there's a biological upgrade. There's the eczema, it's gone. There's the Parkinson's, it's gone. There's the blindness, it's gone. There's the deafness, it's gone. There's the stage four cancer, it's gone. It's an a immediate wow. biological upgrade. Now, the energy now, to finish this, is not in the neocortex. Lights are out here. You're gone, Lewis is gone. There's no longer an identity called Lewis. Mm. The inner world is profoundly real and the autonomic nervous system, the midbrain, the limbic brain, that's controlling all your automatic functions. When you're in stress, that autonomic nervous system is dysregulated, it's out of balance. Now you're getting so much order, mm. so much rhythm, that autonomic nervous system's touching every single cell in your body, every tissue, every organ, every system, and it's jiggling the cells, and the cells are getting new information coherently. And so you see the person get a biological upgrade. Mm. Now, you can only talk around this. You have to have the experience, but people who have the experience will, will, will have the biggest smile on their face because they'll realize it was always available to them. So the fundamental question is, is it worth it? That's the real question. Because if you're willing to make those changes every day before you start your day and you have mm. this kind of arousal coming from within you, I guarantee you, you won't be looking in your outer environment to find those feelings. You'll be, you'll be looking within you. And so, inside, yeah. and so in, in stress and in survival, most of your attention is out there. When you leave a week-long event, something amazing happens. You're paying more attention in here. You're paying as much attention in here as you are out here. You're not so seduced, right? So then, as you begin to become, you, you know how to get beyond your body, your environment, and time. The formula is, the moment you dissociate from everything known, the moment you dissociate from everything material, the moment you can relax into the present moment and the brain starts to synchronize, is the moment you become mm. pure consciousness and you are in the present moment. You're in the door to the quantum field and the brain gets highly organized. Okay, so now we have a coherent brain and the coherence in the brain starts to resonate with different frequencies in the field and when there's an octave, when there's a harmonic, the brain starts processing information, right? But they're suggestible, not from out there, but from the field, that's frequency. Mm. But the brain has to be coherent to pick up the rhythm, the frequency. Right. If, it, if it's not, if it's, if you're incoherent, you got static. In, in other words, you got no, you got no <laughs> Wi-Fi signal. You're, sure. you're a piece of matter with no field, right? So then, that sends the signal out, coherent brain. And but what's going to draw the experience back? Our heart, right? So then, we practice then every day, cultivating heart, yeah. the emotions uh -huh. and being able to sustain heart coherence. Now you combine those two and we have beautiful, beautiful brain scans and heart scans to show the dance between the mm. two. And now you got this kind of, <laughs> your heart is speaking to you. I don't know how else to say right. it. It's, you're not getting information from the news, which is, you're not getting information from your Facebook. You're not getting information from your cell phone. That information is just equal to what you're willing to believe. But when your heart speaks to you because there's a resonance between the two, it's gonna tell you exactly what's right for Lewis. Yeah. And it's not gonna be what anybody else tells you. You're going to know. Mm. So that means then when you're in certain situations and something doesn't feel right because your heart is tuned, you know, the brain thinks, but the heart knows. Ooh. And so when you start getting in this compass, when you start navigating here, when you start practicing this and you start feeling, you are going to see the world through another lens. So then, back to your question. If by chance, I'm knocked out of balance, I will know right away, right away, oh, I lost the feeling. So then in the beginning, it may take longer, but as you, get, as you start evolving your experience every day, you wanna get better at being able to, might a great day for me, is that when I am locked in, 
and no person, no circumstance, no condition in my life is moving from the, me from the emotions of my future. Mm. And it could be challenging and hard, and I'm willing to go the distance because the next day, there's always a little magic. Yeah. Like I, I've earned the right for, for the experience now. I've been initiated, and I overcame some of those things, and I will see them as having less control over me. So that means then, when the synchronicities happen, when the serendipities happen, when the opportunities show up, I'm no longer believing that I'm the victim of my life. All of a sudden, I become more aware that I'm the creator of my life, mm -hmm. right? And so then, I respond less to the environmental circumstances, and if I respond less, then the environment no longer weakens me. And if I'm no longer Ooh. weakened by my environment, then I would be immune Ooh. to my environment. And you could create a lot better from a place of a powerful immune system, a powerful environment, a powerful thoughts. So you can create from that space better than a weakened environment. Exactly, but here's the weird thing. The weird thing is that people are no longer creating material things. This is weird. They don't want, the, <laughs> you think that you want them, right? But when you start doing this work and you start- You don't need work, it. You're just happy. Imagine being so happy with you mm -hmm. that you don't want to be anybody else. And you don't need anything to make you, you feel better. Be anybody, you don't need anything else. You're just really cool with everything, right? I mean, that's a good place to be. And when yeah. you no longer want, you're no longer trying to control your life or predict it. Wow, the game changes a little bit. You know what's interesting? I live in this, you know, kind of really fancy condo building nearby here. And uh, I got it because it's really convenient. It's close to this office space. Uh, it's got great views of the mountains, the golf course, all that stuff. But I'm probably the least fancy person in this building. I mean, it's every type of exclusive car you can think of. And every day, I, I literally smile getting up and going out of the building because I have a $200 scooter that I take to work that I scoot past these Ferraris and Lamborghinis and McLarens, whatever these cars are, I'm scooting past all these owners of these cars and I'm smiling. Of course, I'm so you're happy. free, you're I'm free. I'm just like scooting, it's not even electric, it's a push scooter. Yeah. And I'm just like, I'm just happy with this moment. I don't need, right. not that it's, you know, if you wanna have cool cars and fancy do stuff. Do that for a while. Yeah. Off, do it for a while until you outgrow it, yeah. It's fun too and it's like nothing against it and I wanna have nice things but I don't need it to feel happy. Right, so that's a, that's a really important thing because people build an identity mm. by you know, becoming some type of body, having some type of body, knowing someone or being someone, owning some things, living somewhere at some time, and the identity then is identifying with everything material in the three-dimensional world, and all their attention is out there, but you want to hide the divine anywhere in a human being, the best place to hide it is within them. They'll look everywhere else for it. Wow. So then when you start moving closer towards it and you start feeling more whole, then the scooter is just a, a, <laughs> a signature of what you love about life, your yeah, freedom. So fun. the the Porsche and you know all those things become an identity. And, and when you become possessed by your possessions Ooh. and you can't get beyond them to create, because your identity is so steeped in the three-dimensional world, it's gonna take crisis, it's gonna take trauma, it's gonna take disease, it's gonna take diagnosis, it's gonna to take a lot. through from that, right? No, it's gonna, to for a person to finally go, what's, what's, more, yeah, what's, more, it's what's more important, right? right? So when you feel so off, you feel so altered, that no sports car, no shopping spree, no meal is gonna make the feeling go away. Now this is when the soul's going, hey, wake up, because now nothing out there is gonna make this feeling go away. What are you left with? For the first time, you're no longer responding to your texts. Right. You're no longer checking all your uh, emails. You're no longer posting. You're no longer going out to dinner with the same people, listening to the same stories. You're like, you're breaking all those agreements. Right. And now you're looking at yourself because you feel so altered that you can finally see yourself like someone else sees you, you're, you're observing. Now, that's when you begin to objectify the subjective self. That's, when, that's the moment you're disentangling from the program. My message is, why would you wait for that? Why not marry a clear intention with an elevated emotion every day, instead of going to your lowest denominator to see yourself, go to an elevated state, yes. and from an elevated state, look at the old self and be so conscious like, okay, now I'm up here. So, you practice the meditation as a rehearsal for game time. And right. then you open your eyes and now it's game time. It's not like I did my meditation, you're on the freeway and you're you know, flipping people <laughs> off or judging your coworker. Now you gotta you, show up. You gotta show up and you gotta demonstrate it. Now you, you primed your brain and body to demonstrate it. Now the game changes. Yes. Now, now it's instrumental, right? So then 
when you when you have that kind of understanding and you you can get in touch with what that is you'll know the moment you lose it yes. that it's not something is not right so from an elevated state now you could look at the old self and the moment you start going down you're like i lost it but you're not you don't have to reach that low place why not do it every day so that when you start noticing your energy dropping you'll get better at it and this yeah. is not positive thinking this is creation because if you can maintain that modified state of mind and body your entire day get ready because weird stuff's yeah. gonna happen all around you're gonna be like and this happens all the time people say I'm not doing anything oh my god of course you're not you don't have to do anything you are the vortex you're allowing you're it's coming to you yes you're coming it's coming to you. so so then when that person overcomes themselves and they're sitting in the fire it's not no longer pleasure it's no longer you know the need for what a gratification they're just in love with themselves they're satisfied yes. with themselves now when they're in love with themselves and they can allow others to be however they want then the side effect of that is called joy joy yeah. is the absence of the torment of those emotions Ooh. that keeps the body unhappy so allowing others to be what reactive or angry or happy you're just you're, you're just you've over you're just not that anymore you're yes. happy right yes. so a scooter would bring you just mu as much joy as a as a sports car because yeah. you don't need either one of them to be happy it's just you want the experience of just being free and driving your little Vespa, whatever it yeah. is, right? The, the, to me, I'm the same way. Like, I'm not. I, I've had all those things, and none of that means anything to me. I'm. I'm about. We take memories with us. Mm. I, mean, I want to experiences. I, experiences. I want to have yes. moments that I'll never forget in my entire life. And I don't care if it's the most amazing meal with great friends and great wine and great toasting and great moments and a lot of gratitude, or it's a mystical moment that's so profound and so transformative, those are the ones that you take with you. Yeah. And so overcoming the past and the emotions that are connected to the past and lowering the volume to those emotions is called wisdom. Mm. Now wisdom is what we take with us and that's when we're done. And now we're ready for the next experience. So, so then that, that teaching people how to find that place of love for themselves means that they have to come up against everything that stands in the way between Ooh. them and that and and that's what the is work. that usually for people? it's it's the survival emotions it's hardwired programs it's their past it's the story that they tell about their past i just want them to tell the story of their future more right. than they're telling the story of their past how much is healing the inner child how important is that is that everything in terms of healing the past memories that are stored in the body and the brain I'm not certain that we need to heal an inner child in as much as we need to overcome an emotion. Like, mm. I never tell a person to go back to their childhood and remember the events. The, 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 the story is probably not even accurate. Right. Just overcome the emotion. Forget the story. Overcome the emotion and you belong to the future instead of the past, right? So, so will that heal the inner child? Yes. Have I had profound moments where I saw things as a child and how I framed them? Absolutely. But that was a moment where I was, I was enlightened that I didn't need to do that anymore, but it was inwardly that I did that. So healing the inner child is healing the same person. You're right. only the child when you feel the emotion. That's taking in you the back. Moment. In the moment, you're going back to being seven and trying to figure out why your things are happening the way they are. That's never going to be resolved. But if you don't have the emotion, the child is healed. The child is free, right? I mean, so we just work on the emotions. That's yes. that's the key. And so when you when you overcome the emotion that's charged that keeps you connected to the past, and you no longer have an emotion connected to the past, then that's wisdom. Then you know. I mean, then you're free. Freedom. What's the opposite of love? Because you're mentioning the opposite of love is not fear, it's not anger. There what? is no opposite. The love is love is wholeness. I mean, it's the union of polarity. It's the union of duality. It's opposites coming together. That it's the center of the magnet. Yeah. There's no, there's no polarity in love. There is no opposite. There, we are. We came from pure love. Mm -hmm. We came that. We came yeah. from unity, source, singularity, zero point, universal mind, whatever you call it. Yes. We 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 descended into density from oneness. To answer the question, is there more? There is more. And you are, you have you went. We came. There's how do we say this? There's 
there's one God, but in that God there are many. So all of us have a spark of oneness, of the divine in us, and we've come down to such a degree of separation that we no longer are connected right. to anyone or anything that you have the free will now. You are so autonomous that the spark of the divine is in you as oneness that you get to create reality on your want to answer the question, is there more? And you get thousands of opportunities to do it. Yeah. It's interesting. Uh, Kai and I grew up in a specific religion called Christian Science, which I've told you about before. And my dad, I don't know if your, your parents did this, Kai, but my dad, whenever there was a commercial on a TV, you mentioned this, when we're going to sleep, we see commercials that are feeding us medicine or foods or whatever, things we need or whatever he would always turn the commercials off when there was a medicine because he didn't want us to program our yeah, minds of course. from watching this, oh, when you get sick, you need this. You need this to feel better. Something outside of you to change your internal state. Yeah, he would always change that off and say, no, we're going to have one mind and focus on a capital one mind mm -hmm. uh, and get to the place of truth of knowing who we are. And it's interesting that... With social media today, especially with the lockdown for so many people, we're just programming our minds to be in reaction to something we need when we feel like we're lacking it. And it makes us, I feel like- So you can choose. So yeah. you can choose to become dependent on, more of dependent on that. Exactly. And so imagine, if you're not, if you've overcome your emotions, really every day, I guarantee you that you'll pay less attention to that. They only capture your attention with an emotion. They'll tell you, you know, Lewis, as you age, your immune system's getting weaker and weaker mm -hmm. and weaker. And then you see a picture of some guy in his 50s and he looks really good and you don't, he looks better than you. And you're like, oh, oh God, he looks really good. And John here, you know, has had something that you could get if you had chicken pox. Uh-oh, I had chicken pox. One out of three people get this. Uh-oh, mm. I'm, I'm not such a lucky guy. And then they show you a picture of somebody with shingles and it looks like a fourth degree burn. The whole entire... What are you going to do? The, the effect of that image is going to capture your attention because it shocked you. Now you're going to lean in and pay more attention to it. Now they got you. And anything they say after that is going to start the programming process. Mm. So you capture people's attention with their emotions. Remember that. And if you want to divide a community, choose fear or choose anger, and you'll polarize everybody. Really? Of course. And then you can then you can decide what the solution is because now people will be susceptible to information. They'll believe whatever it is equal to that emotion. You captivate based on fear or anger? Can you captivate on love? Yeah, of course, but that's not the program. Right. <laughs> and that's the truth. Nobody wants to hear the truth. They want to hear something that's really going to rock them emotionally. Mm. And you're going, to, you're going to give a lot of your attention to that. And that's where the danger comes in. I have pages of questions that I didn't get to around money, mindset, and other things that I want to go into. But I want to save it for another time. So if you want to hear on... Topics around money mindset, rich mindset, how to overcome the poor mindset, and other topics with Dr. Joe Dispenza, then let me know in the comments on social media, post if you're on YouTube, leave a comment below, let us know, and we'll hopefully we can get you back in the next six to 12 months and do another. This two hours flew by for me, so. Was it that long? It's, I think it's almost two hours, but I want, I want to go another hour, but I know you have <laughs> things to do. Uh, when, we are, when we are in the, you're in the flow. Every time we're together, and that's what I love about our conversations, we just Dude, you're a great stuff. interviewer. I mean, I love... No, I just I ask one question, and that's it. And it just <laughs> lets you go. But uh, I just feel like there's so much that we need to be reminded. You know, we, we've done other interviews in the past that I want... We'll link up here uh, in the show notes, and I want people to go watch. There's things that we all need to be reminded that you need to be reminded every morning when you wake up, hey, I need to be better. Well, what, be is, better. what is it? What is it well, so what is mind? Mind is the brain in action. That's mm -hmm. what it is, according to neuroscience. So then... It's important for us to remind ourselves, reproduce the same level of mind every day, fire and wire the circuits, install them, and then emotionally embrace the future so the body's conditioned more to the future instead of the past. That's reminding the brain mm. and body, right? And what happens if we don't remind ourselves of that future that we want to create every and, day? Hey, listen, if, if you're not waking up being defined by a vision of the future, I can guarantee you, you'll be predictable because you'll be in the memories of your past, Ooh. period. It's the way it is. And, and I just, Gosh. I want people to believe in their future more than they believe in their past. I want them to be more in love with their future than they are with their past. I want them to romance a new future mm. more than they romance their past. And it's so much easier to forget our vision 
than to remember it. And that's why we have to remind ourselves every day. It's easier to forget it than to remember it. Of course, in the beginning, there's no circuitry there. So that's why it's a daily practice. Schedule it in, make it the first thing you do, the last thing you do at night, think about it. Do you know how many people stop me and say, you're not gonna believe this. I actually took two weeks just to see if this worked. I can't <laughs> tell you in two weeks all the crazy things that happened to me. Like, like they have to convince me. Like I'm not interested in convincing anybody any longer that this, is, this works. I'm, I'm, I'm just never, I want you to just learn how to do it yeah. so that it's like you, you eat something really great at a dinner table, the first thing you want to do is share it with somebody. Yeah. Like, it tastes much, yeah, like yeah. that's how I am. Like, I'm going to stick it in your mouth, right? It's, <laughs> it's great. So you have that experience. You want other people to experience it. Why? Because imagine a community of people, yeah. a living organism of human beings caring for one another, loving one another, informing one another, honoring one another, respecting one another, healing one another, shining for one another just so others can shine. I mean, that's... That's who we are when we're not living in yeah. fear and anger and in survival. That's mm -hmm. that we are innately wired to care for one another, to to respect one another, to to be in to to be a collective, a new consciousness, a, a, another way. And yeah. and and if you practice it, just feeling a little love every day, a little gratitude, a little gratitude every day. Mm. I can prove to you. I have the research. You're immune system is going to be so strong, it's going to be immune to any foreign agent. With gratitude. Just 10 minutes, 20 minutes of gratitude a day. Well, yeah. What do you got? Not, not just to think about the things that you're grateful for, but to embrace them emotionally. Mm. Why? Because you want to practice feeling that. What's the, what's the emotional signature of gratitude? When you're receiving something favorable, you just received something favorable, something amazing is happening to you or something amazing just happened to you that surprised you, what do you say? You feel grateful, right? Mm -hmm. So the emotional signature of gratitude means something amazing just happened to you. You've just, something just happened or something is literally happening to you. Gratitude is the ultimate state of receivership. Yeah. So if you finish your meditation in gratitude before the event occurs, your body as the unconscious mind is believing it's already happened to it's you. Receiving, and you're yes. in the state of receiving. So, mm. and what do you got to lose except your immune system? The worst thing that could happen to you is you'll heal. That's the worst yeah. thing that could happen to you. Yes. So if you don't practice it though, you practice watching the news and getting angry and frustrated, you're practicing that. And then the information that you're receiving is equal to your emotional state. And I'm just questioning information now more than ever. I yes. wouldn't trust it anymore. I trust my heart uh -huh. over the information that I'm getting. If people want to get started with more, uh, if this is your first exposure to Dr. Joe, you can check out his book. I highly recommend the book, Becoming Supernatural. He's got many other books on his website. We'll have it linked up uh, below. Check out the other interviews we've done. If you're on Apple Podcasts or Spotify right now, we'll have those linked up in the description. If you're on YouTube, We'll have other videos linked up as well. You also have some new audios I heard that are just coming out. One of the things we do is we teach people how to create from the field yes. instead of from matter. When you create matter to matter, it's just gonna take time. Because mm -hmm. you gotta move your body through space and it takes time and energy. And so you can get the house, you can get the car, it's just gonna take you a couple of years and you gotta mm -hmm. save for it and you gotta work more and you gotta fight for it. And That's the know, matter way. Matter to matter. What's the field way? Well, you gotta get to the field. So learning the formula and how to get to the field as pure consciousness and you create from the field instead of from matter. If you're connected to source, then you are, you are creating as source. Yes. So then now you no longer go anywhere to get it. You learn how to draw it to you. So we have these meditations that we've been doing with our advanced group called synchronizing your energy to synchronicities in your life. Mm. So we have them for abundance, we have it for health, we have it for love, we have it for the mystical, wow. and we have it for a new life. And so it's a great way. We just did a live stream. We had, um, I think, 25,000 people on that live stream wow. when we were in, in uh, Marco Island, Florida, doing our event. And it's just really a way for people to learn how to synchronize their energy, create brain and heart coherence, and then begin to create experiences. So, in, for example, abundance, as I said, people really want freedom. So they'll tune into the frequency of abundance, draw the experience to them, then to freedom, and then the last one is opportunity. People want health, mm. they want wholeness and an yes. opportunity. Love, they want joy and an opportunity. The mystical, they want awe and an opportunity. A new life, they want to be inspired in an opportunity. So. We teach them how to create from the field. So those are the synchronizing meditations. Where, where can we get these meditations, these audios? 
Are they on your website? They, I think they'll be on my. Uh, they'll, they'll be released on the website. And the main yeah. website is drjoethespenza.com. Okay, so if you go there, opt in for the newsletter. There'll be information on the top and where you can get these audios, meditations, books. And the main thing is to go to the live events if you can. So show up to a live event, get a ticket as fast as you can. All that's announced on your website as well. It'll yeah, be yeah. There. I mean, with 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 uh, the current uh, situation, we're just starting to do events again. Of course, we're we're following the guidelines and doing everything we're supposed mm-hmm. to. But um, yeah, we, we hope that we can start doing our week long events. Yeah. And then you know, again, that's just you're with a community of people, and it's you're not on your cell phone or checking your WhatsApp or Facebook. I got you. Yeah. And it's, we're, you're, you're not going anywhere. You're, you're going from your old self to your new self in one week. And we mm. have some really compelling data where we, we did some research in, um, in Indian Wells in February with our research team. Is you this know, the new research you were telling me about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so we, we had um, 32 people that we were measuring. Their, we did uh, a, a random selection of 32 people. We measured their brains before the event. We measured their brains after the event, and we had them wearing heart rate monitors mm. to measure heart rate variability. But we partnered with uh, a research team at the University of California, San Diego, and um, we started measuring these things called exosomes, with cellular vesicles that release genetic material that tell you if the cell is healthy or the, ce- or the body or the cell is in a state of breakdown. And so um, we did the studies, uh, we we drew a lot of blood, uh, and um, we subjected the blood to a whole different Mm. variations of different things. Anyway, COVID happened and the lab closed, and, um, but just before the lab closed, uh, the senior researcher called me up and said, we have some really compelling data. And we saw just a couple people, one in particular, who came in really sick. I mean, his the amount of imbalance on a cellular level that he had in his body was dramatic. But then he went from very, very sick in one week to like an unbelievable change. And they just never seen anything like that. Mm. And these, the scientist that's partnering with us is the man who was responsible for studying the epigenetic changes in the identical twins, one on the earth for a year, the other one in outer space for a year, and measuring how the environment influences the genes. So he's a smart guy. And he said, we've just never seen anything like this. And um, so we started looking at this guy's data and he had just tremendous heart uh, measurements. Like not only was his heart coherent, Lewis, but the, the amplitude of energy in his heart was profoundly high. In other mm-hmm. words, it wasn't a little love he was feeling, it was a lot of love. So we asked him, we found him, we asked him and he had a very profound, profound last three days of his event. We looked at his brain, his brain was beautiful, all just beautiful alpha patterns by the end of the event. Anyway, um, we got this crazy idea, because we were writing a grant for the, to the NIH in the last couple of weeks for some, for some other research. We got this crazy idea, what if we took his blood, because it was so, so, so dramatic, and we subjected his blood before the week long to COVID? to SARS-CoV-2, which is the virus. And then let's subject his blood to COVID after the week long, since he had so many traumatic changes. So the COVID is- uh, so you put COVID in both blood samples? Yeah, in both blood samples. We had them frozen, so we thought them, and when we put the, the COVID in his blood before the week long, of course, all the plasma, all the cells in the plasma absorbed the COVID and on the, ra- on the, on the microscopic field, it shows up as bright red because the radioactive dye is absorbed by the cells and the microscopic field shows that there's an infection. In all the blood. All the blood. So, but when we subjected his blood this, to the COVID <laughs> after the week long, <laughs> there was hardly any infection at all in this blood. Really? Very, 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 very minimal viral load. They, they would consider it none. So <laughs> this is really compelling data because this guy had so much love from his week-long wow. event that he could not react and respond to his environment oh the gosh. same way. And his body was making these particular immune factors that made him resistant to the virus. It's <laughs> crazy. So we're now, st- we had him come to the event in uh, last week and we drew a lot of blood. And at the end of the event, he had a very profound experience. So we're looking for those harvestable factors wow in the treatment and prevention of uh, viruses. So yeah. our, our feelings and thoughts of being in love with ourselves 
will transform our blood. Of course. What do, you, what do you think? You think your those feelings of love don't have an effect on your body? Right. You feel more wholeness. Right. So and imagine feeling so much love that it's impossible for you to react or respond to your environment that would cause a weakening of the organism. Uh. So if you keep saying, I hate the traffic, I hate the news, I hate the politician, I hate the, the, I hate the COVID, whatever, you're, you're reacting to everything. Your response to the environment is actually weakening you to become more vulnerable to the environment. If you're in a great place Gosh, of love and you're so not funny. reacting to the environment, you're less susceptible to the environment. Like, so, okay, this is happening around me and I'm still in love. It's, it still can happen around you, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, we're, so we, we're just looking at some of the data now. This is amazing. Again, if you guys want more, uh, put, a, put the, a comment below on the YouTube with the hashtag greatness if you want more from Dr. Joe to come back on soon and we can dive into more of this stuff. You're the man. I'm always grateful for your time here. You're, you, you share so much wisdom and you break it down for people to, to overcome a lot of pain, a lot of suffering, because the world is in pain. A lot of people are, and they don't have the tools, they don't have the inspiration, and they aren't reminded of this enough, like we need to be reminded daily to be able to transform our lives. So I'm just very grateful for you, your time, oh, always. You, uh, I hope we can hang more and do more of this. I'm coming to an event soon, I promise. I'm making the commitment. It will happen. I want this. I want this. This, this portion happen? of the video. I want this portion of the video. Just send it to me I so I can <laughs> Say, send it. To, I can by play when. this back to him in three months. Exactly. Exactly. We'll make it happen. But uh, I appreciate you, man. Thanks for everything. And uh, as always, it's a pleasure. Pleasure to be here with you. If you're looking for more greatness in your life, make sure to check out this video right here. And also check out our free PDF, The Three Secrets to Unlock the Power of Your Mind to Help You Change Your Life. Download it right here. And they end up very isolated and depressed. And then they go through this whole cycle of yeah. trying to find themselves. And um, you need to balance.